Okay, uh, let's, uh, uh, are you all right? Are you hit anywhere? No, no. Okay, uh, okay, come on, Nathan, come on, she's gone. She's gone, let's come on. We gotta go. Oh, oh. Are you okay, man? Are you okay? Yeah, okay. Mm. Leo, Leo! What? We should get this together before you make that call. What? We gotta talk. Friend. Oh my god. You got blood all over you. We should have had her in cuffs. Listen, what are you talking like that for? She was a member. All we were trying to do was interview her, all right? Okay. Okay, this is how it happened. I saw what happened. Okay, but look. We came to serve the warrant, right? We're coming out, we're coming to get the gun, everything's. We should never let her come back up into the house. Look, Nick, listen to me, all right? Just let me make a call, all right? Then we'll get our ducks in a row. We'll get a lawyer out here right away, all right? But just let me make this call, okay? Yeah. Are you all right? Mm. You okay? Should have had her in cuffs. neighborhood for a while. Uh, I was just down picking up a couple things from a friend, some clothes I lent her. Oh, yeah. So, uh, what's going on? I wanted to thank you for helping me out the other day with the money. That really helped. And after I'm picking up a guy. Glad I was able to help. I was wondering if you had another 20 bucks you could lend me. No. 10? Come on, Sue. Do I look like a bank machine to you? Sorry. Hey, Sue. Come on, I'll, I'll buy you some lunch. Not hungry. Shannon and Larry. They were on another homicide investigation. Or an ongoing, an ongoing investigation? Yeah. The, um, the victim's a uniform by the name of Josie Hutchins. She was first member at the initial shooting of an exotic dancer and a bouncer. At oh, that. yeah, the bouncer. I heard about that. Yeah. yeah. Well, it turns out she was keeping back some information. Now, the detectives were here to serve a warrant and see their weapon. What is, what's going on with that case? Was she a suspect there? Well, there's no indication of that unless um, they found something today their involvement was criminal. So we've we've got two or three investigations here. They're all intermingling. Well, you know, the criminal takes precedence. That's your immediate shooting, and then your ongoing investigations, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so what's the story so far? Well, just what Mick and Leo told the uniform. She bolted, got a gun from her apartment. She fired a Mick, fired a Mitch Oh, yeah? Who's going to take this one? I am. I'm going to take this one. Uh, Cosme's on the way down. She's, uh, she's going to go on the ongoing. Okay. I'd like to talk to the detectives. You are? Rose, shop steward. All right, they're right over there. Leo. Hey, Rose. You the union rep? Yeah, there's another one on the way. Dr. Mick, tell him he should take a lawyer. Mick, you want to talk to me? Listen to her for a minute. Kurtz and Da Vinci and everybody's about 30 seconds from being all over you. Give me half a minute, then I'll shut up and go away if you want me to, OK? Go ahead. OK, without knowing all the circumstances, I can tell you my experience with these things is it can get ugly quick, particularly if things didn't go strictly kosher. It was by the book. Great, good, OK. And I'm just here to tell you this. If you ask for a statement, you have rights. You can simply say you choose not to give a statement at this time. OK, I get it, but I'm good with it. OK, well, think about it. You're in a stress situation. Leo, this is for both of you, right? No, no, no. He, he wasn't involved, not in the shooting. I was saying this is an emotional situation, and you don't have to give a statement now, either of you. You can do that tomorrow or the next day. So once you give a statement, you can't take it back. It's all on the record. I'm OK with taking a day to get some legal advice. Do what you want. I'm good. You have to think about whether you're facing a civil suit. Forget about the criminal charges for a minute. Here they come. Hey, all right. Yeah, I'm good. You two are automatically off the case. You're on administrative leave. 
Okay. Who's taking a primary on this? I am. Okay, well, I'm gonna... This is like a natural for me, so I'm gonna initiate a parallel investigation. Please, you're gonna seize all the evidence for me, right? Mm -hmm. Unless, of course, the criminal charges are pending. Hey, there's no criminal intent here. This was a self-defense shooting. I'm going to remind you both you don't have to make any statements. Understood. I'm, uh, I'm gonna be doing your interviews separately. That means you're not gonna be talking to each other about the incident, right? Okay. Yeah. Sergeant, sorry. Yeah, what is it? I've got victim's sister over here. She's pretty upset. She overheard some of the members talking. She knows what happened. Please tell me which one. I want to know who shot her. All right. Tell her I'll be over there to talk to her in a minute. But she's not going to be allowed on the crime scene at all, all right? OK, look, um, I'm going to go take a look at the scene here, and then we'll do our interviews downtown, all right? Yep. Funny, sir. I got some in the back of my car. Check in or something. All right. Listen, you're, um, you're going to have to get her right downtown with a uniform, all right? OK. Nick. What? You sure you want me to step up? Yeah. Yeah. OK, well, I'll see you downtown in a little while. We'll touch base. OK. Hey, Rose, you got a minute? Yeah. Because I'm thinking it might be a good idea if I did hook up with a lawyer. You should try to convince Nick to do the same. It was a legit shooting. She fired at him. It doesn't matter. He should be thinking about a civil suit. Any procedural hiccups, they're going to be gunning for both of you. You got a name for the lawyer? Yeah, I got a couple. And you should be talking to somebody from the post-critical incident team. Yeah, OK, good. Do you okay to drive? Yeah, I'm fine. Hi. Hey there, Rose. Hey, Leo. Hey, what's going on over there? I think that's the victim's sister. You taking over the case from us? Yeah, the double. Guess you gotta bring me up to speed. All well, the paperwork's at the station, but I can tell you what I know. All right. Nothing about this afternoon here, Leo. Just on the other case, stopping short of what went down here. Otherwise, you're giving a statement that might be relevant to the present proceedings. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Okay. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Hey, thanks, Rose. I'm not taking a statement. I'm just getting up to speed on the file. Yeah, I know. It's OK. It's OK. You sure you're OK? I'm fine. All right. So uh, what besides the weapon were you looking for in the apartment? We were just trying to find something that could link her up with the bouncer, let us know what the nature of their relationship was. Because she lied about that previously, about knowing the guy, right? Or, or avoided mentioning she knew him. Yeah, avoided, yeah. I mean, she might have had a reasonable explanation for that. You know, maybe she was embarrassed. Though. She can't tell us now. Listen, I don't want to tell you how to run this thing, but you know that we got to work together on this down in the trenches. I know how to get things done. Yeah, because, you know, that just as easily could have been Mick playing up there with a bullet in his head. Let's yeah. not forget that. Leo, I know how to take care of things, OK? Yeah, I know. OK. Somebody over from victim services to talk to that woman there. Yeah, I'll get on it right now. Two shots. Yeah. Well, it's hard to say what happened from what I'm seeing. Could be anything. You need anything more right now? No, I don't think so. I'm gonna go down and well, let's get the forensic team over here as soon as possible. I'll go downstairs and talk to the uniform, see what they got out of the Mick and Leo. All for evidence? Yeah. Gunshot residue and blood. Okay. Two o'clock? Two o'clock, OK, Leo? Yeah, whatever. He says OK. The lawyer coming here, or am I going there? She's coming here. She's probably got time for the both of us. You want to change your mind? No, I'm good with that one. OK, I just thought maybe, you know, a little time passed. You might have some other thoughts. So what do we do now? I don't know what to do. Well, you do your interviews. Then you both have to talk to a department psychologist to get cleared to go back on the road. Right. I'd also suggest you talk to somebody from the critical incident team, someone who's been through this you can uh, connect with. Yeah, I'll talk to him member. OK. Yeah. How about you, Leo? I'll just stick with the shrink. All right. 
Well, I'll put that together before you get back to you. Thanks. I guess we just hang around here now. Um, I guess so. I don't know what the hell. I don't know what the hell she was thinking about. What was she gonna do? Get into a firefight with us and then make a run for it? She was insane, that's what she was. Out of here. All right, so that's around from her leg through and through. Okay, well, that fits trajectory of uh, mixed frame from the doorway. Yeah, you guys can speculate all you want. I can just give you what I find. Now, this looks to be a nine mil round, standard issue, so I could have come from mixed gun. Okay, so that if that is mixed gun, then what happened was the first round, it hit her in the knee, took her down, and then the second, the fatal round, catched her in the head. Or it could happen the other way around, the head one first, right? What's that in that covered right there? Let me see that. That could be the second round. You know? That's the second round. Oh, yeah, good eyes. That could be the second round they fired right there. I mean, the headshot, huh? And what's, uh, what's that? Looks like a lockbox, maybe. Oh, right, okay. The gun could have come out of there for sure, yeah. Okay, so that's what happened. And she came here looking for a gun underneath the couch, in the lockbox, and she spins around, fires this way. Well, okay, if you guys are done, I'm gonna need to kick you out. I gotta bring my team in here. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll back off. Okay. Thanks. Can I have a win? Yeah, sure. You should know that Mick was maybe having a personal relationship with the victim. What was that? Well, I heard she was chasing her around a little bit, but it's all rumor. Does that rumor involve him reciprocating the attention? I don't know, but if there was something going on, that's gonna come out. Oh, yeah. That's for sure. Okay. How's it going? All right. You, uh, done with the scene? Yeah, I'm gonna call body pick up and cut her down on the morgue right now. I think I'm gonna stick with Chick for a while, but I'll be down there when the autopsy's ready to go. Okay, so I'm gonna roll? Listen, um, you report to me on this, okay? Nobody else. Corner's office is going to be over our shoulders, so you keep it close to the chest. Nothing leaks. Yeah, I understand. Union's paying for this, right? The union, yeah. I'm on a retainer with the union. Okay, well, that's good. Okay. So, the first thing they're going to want to look at is your procedure. That was by the book. Okay, good. We'll go over that. Before we do that, I need to ask you, do you want to separate yourself from anything that your partner did? No, why would I want to do that? It's my advice that you do that. Forget it. It's my understanding that he doesn't want legal counsel, am I right? Let me get something straight with you. Whether my partner knows it, likes it, wants it, or whatever, you are representing both of us, him and me. Because right now, he's in a state of shock, and it's going to take a couple of days before he even realizes that he needs you. No, I'm sorry. What he's going to need is another lawyer. If this thing goes sideways because of something your partner did, he can take you down with him. There's an issue of something we call shared responsibility. And... Whoa. You're not going to let it go sideways. That's your job. I'm going to bring my partner around. Now, could we talk about the job I did, okay? Okay, let's talk about it. Was one of you working as the primary on this? Why? Would that make a difference? It might. Depending on who made the call to allow her into the apartment ahead of you, which subsequently gave her time and access to her weapon. Okay, I did that. I let her in. That was me. That's going to correspond with what your partner says? I don't know. I don't know what the hell is going on in his mind right now. But that's what happened. After her up the stairs, and uh, by the time we got to the top, she disappeared into the apartment pretty quickly. Poked my head around the corner, and, and she was at the couch, sitting there, pulling a weapon out from underneath it, and pointed my way. <coughs> Excuse me, I ducked back, and she fired a shot. So I pulled my weapon, and I returned fire a couple of shots back through the doorway blind. All right, what time did you arrive? 11.30. We were there 
to, uh, to seize her department issued weapon and to serve her a warrant to search the apartment. And how did that unfold? Well, Josie was, uh, Constable Hutchins was standing in the back of her car with a couple of bags of groceries in her hands. I think she'd been up and inside already because by the time I chased her up, she got in there so quickly that the, uh, the door had to be open or unlocked. And did you serve the warrant? Didn't get around to it. Had you placed her under arrest? No. Did you think that you might have to place her under arrest? I suppose it could have come to that, depending on what we found in the apartment. Okay, so the intention to arrest was there? Depending on what we found in the apartment. At the time, was there any discussion about placing her under arrest or putting her in handcuffs? No. I, well, I, I had indicated to her that uh, we were there to, to seize her weapon and to search the apartment, uh, that we were there to search. She asked if we could go inside. Um, she wanted to go inside and talk because she was embarrassed to, to, uh, about doing it in front of the neighbors like that, so I said, sure. And there was no discussion with Leo about that? No. How would you describe your relationship with the victim? Did you know her personally? I met her at the case. Like I, I told you before that she had tried to insinuate herself into the case. All right, and there's nothing else you want to say about that? No. Okay. When you went into the apartment, Josie's apartment, you were the lead on the investigation. It was my decision to let her go back in. Okay, Leo's the senior man. Why was that? I was the lead. Not Leo? No. Okay, that's, um, that's all we need. Thanks. Thanks for cooperating. Thank you. So far, that fits what we saw at the scene. Yeah, well, still, it doesn't look too good for Mick, does it? There was no arrest made, huh? No, the intent was there from the minute they got the warrant. The warrant, warrant can be issued and then applied or not. It's at the discretion of the detective. And that interpretation implies that no arrest was going to be made. All right, it makes a big difference whether or not an arrest was initiated. Yeah, if it was, then you may have some procedural problems. But if it wasn't, it's a different set of conclusions. OK, well, either way you cut it, looks to me as though Mick was lax, and Leo, he's been off his game for a while now. All right, well, let me know when you're doing the interview with Leo. I will. When I hear from his lawyer, I'll let you know, OK? First thing to remember is, uh, this is about you. Uh, so if you're thinking about renting any space in your head for the victim, forget about it. You don't want to ask to go home and sleep at night, right? OK. Everybody at the trauma team has uh, a different way of doing it, but uh, well, how about I tell my story and then you can tell me your story? Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I was at this SRO hotel down on East Hastings, and uh, we we're going hotel to hotel, room to room, flop to flop. We were just checking things out. Me and my partner, I'm just a kid, and uh, we're in the hallway of this one hotel. And we hear this commotion up the stairwell. All of a sudden, this guy comes whipping past us with a big knife in his hand. And there's this other guy in hot pursuit. My partner screams out, the guy's got a gun. Just as I turn to see it, the guy starts shooting at us. We duck, but we got nowhere to hide, nowhere to run. What are we gonna do, crawl between the sheets of wallpaper? So I'm pulling my gun out. All of a sudden, this bullet comes whipping past my head. This is zinging past my head, or that close. I can feel the breeze on my face. I pull my gun out, bang, 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 shoot him three times in the chest, guy goes down. Now, that sounds like a factual account of what happened, doesn't it? Yeah. Huh. The truth of it is, look, I, I, don't, I don't know what happened. I, 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 I never saw him clearly. I never, like, I'm not a good shot. I'm not, like, I knew how I, how I felt after that. I felt sick. I felt nausea. I, you know, I had the shakes, night sweats. Ugh. But eventually, I told that story so many times that I could actually see myself doing it. So I could sleep at night. You see how this works? Like, I created a history for myself that... Like, I could fit myself into. Know that guy? 
Hmm? Did you know him? Uh, no, I've never seen him before. I... I knew her. Yeah, I know. I heard that. Yeah. I'm not into this right now. We're gonna hook it up later or something. Thanks, Bob. Hey, Angie. Hey. You didn't see Mick on your way in here, did you? No. Why, you lose him someplace? Well, we were hooking up, I thought, yeah. Hey, did you call the trauma team? Maybe he's still with their guy. Yeah, I did, but the guy said that he'd already left there. Well, then he probably went for a drink. I know I would. Yeah? Yeah, maybe you're right. Hey, listen, I got a couple things I want to talk about with you, if that's OK. Yeah. Okay, when you guys arrived at the scene on the waterfront there with the double homicide, this police officer, Josie, she was there. Yeah. Neither of you guys ever seen her before that time on the waterfront? Maybe around, but not to recognize one. Okay, and at the scene there, you had the two victims in the car, and they were shot with two different guns, is that right? Two shooters, yeah. We interviewed some people where they worked, and we came up with this guy who had a thing for the stripper. Yeah, that would be this Raymond for the teddy bear guy. Yeah, but he turned out to be a dead end. A dead end. Well, once we found out that Josie was lying about the bouncer, Curtis, then she became the next logical step. Right, right, right. You want to tell me about that part. Okay. Let me show you something here. Yeah, that's him. She had a thing for him. Did you find this in Josie's apartment? Yeah. Okay. Then there's this in her notebook here. See? Got the victim's name, his address, phone numbers. And then you got lots of pages, like the times. Like she was stalking him. Yeah, it looks like it. Take a look at this last page there. See? She's got Mick's name there with a little heart doodle right next to it. She's got Mick in here. Yeah, exact same thing. His address, phone numbers, sometimes written down. Then you got a time next to seawall in this note by beer, clean apartment, and a doodle heart. You show this to Mick yet? No, I didn't have the opportunity. Because this woman had a thing for him, you know. Well, from this notebook, it could be construed that he was reciprocating. I mean, it says right here that he was up in her place after going for a run together. You showed this to the sergeant yet? No, just walked it in. Because, you know, this is the kind of thing that uh, she might take the wrong way. Is that Leo? That's called taking care. Hi, Alan. Hi. Oh, how'd it go at the scene? Disaster. Look, about that body of the victim there, did uh, Patricia get my message? Yeah, I gave it to her. Yeah? Is she going to do the autopsy for us? No, she had to go to the university, so Sonny's going to be on it. Sonny. Okay. Okay. Hey. What's up? I, I, I want you to do me a favor and take a pass on this autopsy, okay? What's that? That's Mick. He was involved in the shooting. Mick? Why didn't anyone tell me? I'm telling you now. He was, in, he was involved in this homicide investigation, and the main suspect's another police officer. And she drew down on him, and he had to fire him. He's hurt. No, no, he's not hurt. Outside of being in shock, he's okay. I should uh, call him. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, Patricia should now uh, handle the autopsy, huh? Yeah, why don't you just go give me a call? Right? Wayne? Yeah? Can you put the, the body back in the cooler? Patricia's gonna do this autopsy, and I'm afraid she won't get to it till tomorrow, so. Okay. Yeah. All right.
What's with this meeting this morning? What does Da Vinci want? He wants to interview us, too, I guess. Why don't we do it at his office? I don't know. He just called and he asked us to meet him. Where's Cosmo with the case? Interviews. It's a slam dunk. Josie taking up the gun is solid evidence of guilt. Uh, we could have got to her sooner. Thinking back through it, there was no other way to go. She was the next stop on the road. It's pretty obvious now she was trying to distract me and hustle at me. Can't blame yourself. She was putting it right in your face. Anyway, nobody expects a member to be the shooter. The sergeant's been asking me about that. What was my relationship with her? What'd you tell her? Nothing to tell. How far did that go? Went nowhere. W what's going on was with the third degree. What's this? Cosmo found that in Josie's notebook. OK. You might want to eat that. You shouldn't have done that. Can't put it back now. Here's your problem. Yeah, there are some procedural mistakes, and your sergeant is looking to see who's responsible for those. Yeah, we know. What do you think's going to happen there? I don't know. I would imagine what you'll try and do is divide and conquer. Well. It was my responsibility. I, I made the call. That's how I went down. It's on both of us. See, you guys aren't on the same page. Now, was it your idea you were taking the lead? The way I see it, we were running a game on her. She had the hots for Mick, so we let that play out, kept that relationship going. So then you weren't taking the lead? No, that was me. We were tag teaming. Boy, Leo, you know. Oh, I gotta go. I appreciate what you're doing here is looking out for each other, but what you're actually doing is stepping on each other. And I'm just trying to give it a heads up. So if it was shared responsibility, you know, and that's what you're saying to me, and I'm just not getting it, that's good. I buy that. And if you attest to that, if both of you do, I think everybody else would buy in pretty much. OK, if that's the story. We do that, we got a pretty good shot at just getting some disciplinary action. Yeah, well, you know, I'm not running things, but if I were, I'd probably recommend that. But at the same time, you're also both risking going down. Oh, it's your choice. Shared responsibility? Yeah, yeah, sure. Shared. See, I buy that. That's good. Oh, Leo, get some rehearsal timing with that lawyer there, because your sergeant's got you pegged as uh, old school. Yeah, we talked. I'm ready. She's going to get a load of old school right in her face. Old school. What does that make her, preschool? All right, Mike. So you let the suspect go into the apartment. Did you discuss putting her in handcuffs before you let her go in? No. If this had been any other suspect, not a police officer, would you have put her in handcuffs? You'd cuff her for transport, maybe. We have that discretion, but we don't like to cuff other members. On top of that, I didn't want to cuff her, and then I'd have an uncooperative witness on my hands. So in your mind, she wasn't a suspect, she was a witness? She was cozy enough to Mick, so we let that play out. We let Mick stay friendly. That way we can read how she feels about everything. She is a police officer. She's insinuated herself into the case. She's cagey, maybe, or maybe she's just ambitious. But this is a moment where we wanted to see how cooperative she would be, whether she had some real guilt there or whether she was just trying to hide a potentially embarrassing relationship with a doorman, a bouncer, or whatever the guy was at the club, Curtis. So your intention was to execute the warrant on the apartment, seize gun, and see where that led? We use warrants all the time as investigative tools, right? Well, when you applied for it, you stated that you had grounds, that she was involved, that she was a suspect. Are you suggesting they misrepresented their grounds for the warrant? I'm simply asking the question. Well, the Crown seemed to think they had sufficient grounds, so maybe you need to take that up with them. All right, so you had the warrant. Whose decision was it not to place her in custody? We talked it over and decided this was the best way to play it. You're telling me, as senior member, you talked it over and the both of you made the decision together? When you get to our level, that's the way you do it. You both know what's what. It's a question of experience. But that's beside the point. This whole warrant issue, we had a search warrant, not an arrest warrant. Maybe you forgot that. Mick was the first one in the apartment, is that right? That's right. Well, it sounds to me as though he was taking the lead. In fact, he stated that to me. Well, like I said, we wanted her to think that. And everything Mick said after the shooting was pretty confused. And then this whole lead officer idea is kind of old school. Nowadays, we operate as dual primaries. Really, that's the modern approach. OK, but even if that was the case, your suspect is a police officer. You know she has a gun. Why didn't you simply ask her where the gun was at and go and retrieve it yourself? 
Well, we didn't think she was going to bolt. You didn't discuss that possibility, too, that she might bolt? They had control of the suspect to the point where she took off on them. I don't think that answers my question. It was our intention when we got to the door of the apartment to ask her for her weapon and then we'll retrieve it ourselves, but we never got the opportunity to do that. Have you discussed any of this with Detective Leary? No. Not at all? No, I just said not a word. Excuse me, Detective Cosmo? Yeah? I got a couple of kids downstairs. You maybe should have a word with them. What's it about? This. They saw a guy throw it into the Berard Inlet, so they waded in and got it. One of them took the guy's license plate number. We ran it. Belongs to a guy named Raymond Ford. Raymond Ford? Is that your teddy bear guy? Yeah. Here's his particulars. Photos from motor vehicles. Oh, yeah. That's him. Raymond Here. Ford. I'll get the gun down to Ident. See you about Prince. Hey, where are these kids now? Show me. Sure. You got the wound to the front of her leg here. Exit out the back. Yeah, that fits. I found that bullet in the couch. And ballistics should have results for that today. OK. But this wound here, under her chin, this is what killed her. And it's close range. Yeah, how close? Inches. Are self-inflicted, ma'am? Well, this is an entrance wound. Exit out the back of her skull. Could have done it like this. You can see stippling here. It's not touching. But it's close enough. OK, well, that still fits mixed scenario, doesn't it? I mean. He sees her, you know, go for the gun. So he does what? He retreats behind the door frame, and he hears the shot. Assuming it's for him, he returns fire. All right, well, if this is a self-inflicted gunshot, then where's the fatal round? No, well, I found the one other round in the cupboard behind the couch. No, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. I mean, if it's, if it's self-inflicted and we're sticking with mixed scenarios, evidence is, is suggesting guns in a position like, like this, right? So where's that round going to go? Josanne Hutchins' sister. Yeah, I know. I recognize you. You want to tell me what happened? Why? Well, I, I can't. I apologize. And. That's it? Why? Well, I, I can't. I can't say that I wish my partner was up there first. I, I can't. I don't think you're telling me the truth. My sister told me how it works with police officers, how you cover up each other's mistakes. And I don't want you to do that. Please just tell me the truth. The truth is, is I shot your sister. Yeah, and I'm sorry. OK. I'm going to tell you about how it happened that I came to have that gun. That'd be good, because that's what we want to know. OK, uh, yesterday I'm going out to my car, and I can see right away that it's been broken into, which is unusual, you know? Did you report that? No, I was going to, but, but what happened is I'm looking through it, the car, to see what's missing for the insurance, you know, because I got the comprehensive. And sticking out from underneath the passenger seat there, so you can see it, is this gun. Just in plain sight? Yeah, in plain sight. You know, I'm, and right away, I'm freaked, I mean, because I know you guys are thinking about me for, for the murder of this stripper. And I'm thinking, no, oh, I got to dump this. I got to get rid of this. So you dumped it? Yeah, I threw it in the river. And those two little rats turned me in. It was those two kids that were watching me, right? Are your prints going to be on that gun? No. Why not? You found it. Picked it up. I wiped it after I did that. Well, wouldn't you? OK, now what about your car? I mean, did you report that it was broken into? No. And after I found the gun, I thought I'd better just leave it alone. Was that gun used in that murder? Why you? Why me what? Well, I mean, any idea why somebody would want to put a gun in your car? No, not a clue. Now, let's go over this one more time again, see if we can come up with a reasonable explanation why. Take your time. Ah, okay, good. Hey, we found it. It's up in there in the track lighting there. You see the hole? Oh, yeah. Oh, you got some, uh, some hair on there, too. 
Yeah, probably got some bone and brain matter there. Okay, so this probably played out like this. She came flying in here, right? She goes under the couch, she gets her gun, sits under her chin, bam. He's over there, Mick, he's firing blind. One catches the cover, the other one catches her in the leg, she goes down. That's it. So she wrote. I want you both to know exactly what's going on in my report here, okay? Take a seat. All right, let's start off with the double murders on the water there. Now, you had two victims in the car, each of them shot with different weapons. Ballistics is matched in a nine mil round found in the first victim, the bouncer, to that of Constable Josie Hutchins issue firearm. So maybe she killed the bouncer like we thought. Yeah, it appears that way. Now, we also have a match on the round found in the second victim, the stripper, to the gun that Raymond Ford ditched here in the inlet. It was a 38, and uh, he claims he found that gun in his car. So what, they did the murders together? She shot the bouncer, Ford shot the stripper. No, I don't think so. I'm inclined to think that she did both shootings, and she had a drop piece. A throwaway. She had a throwaway. Mm-hmm. She planted it in Ford's car. Now, Detective Cosmo's leaning that way on the case, and I'm leaning in the same direction. Okay. As far as Constable Hutchins' shooting is concerned, we now know that Mick here didn't fire the fatal round, that uh, it was self-inflicted. Forensics found the missing round in the ceiling, and that round matches the round found in her issue firearm. Okay, good. So the uh, evidence backs up your statements. Good. Now, as far as procedure goes, I'm not real happy about how things went down here, and my report is going to reflect that. But there's nothing in there that's going to indicate any further action on the part of the department. But you're both still going to have to see the department psychiatrist before you go back out on active duty. That's it? Yep, that's it. Let's, uh, let's try and get things back on an even keel around here, huh? There's got to be a relief, eh, Mick? Not really. Well, there's no way in hell you could have known Josie's going to do that, shoot herself. Not really my point. Maybe not, but there was nothing you could do about it. Yeah, well, I'm going to take the rest of the day off, right? In a half hour, i got to see the shrink. Good luck with that. OK, you call me if you need anything. I will. Hey. Nice work there with the double. Yeah, you guys are off the hook. Could be. It could be that Kurtz is just training the water out of the pond to make the fishing easier the next time. Could be, I guess. You want your back. Hey, thanks for the thing with the notebook. You do the same for me, right? Every time. Hey, Dominic. Hey, Mick. I'm glad I caught you. Why? Well, I wanted to let you know that, uh, well, thanks for talking to Leo and me. That conversation we had, it was good advice. Okay, no need to thank me at all. Or... No. You said it found you about that shooting? Yeah, I did. Yeah. And? You see the shrink? No, didn't do that. Don't no wait the longer than that. You gotta talk to somebody. I will. Thanks. You gonna talk to somebody? I will. I will. It says on your record here that you're married. Uh-huh, 34 years. It's a good marriage? Yeah. My wife has uh, Alzheimer's, so she forgets what a jerk I am sometimes. She's at home. Yeah, I'm looking for a place for her, but I, I gotta find a decent place, so she's on some lists. That must be rough on you, taking care of her. You love somebody, that's what you do. Do you have a caregiver who comes in, anything like that? Sometimes, but my wife doesn't like that. Was she getting belligerent? Sometimes she gets mad, sometimes. You know, that's one of the things that's going to happen. Yeah, I've been told that. Well, that's a lot of pressure. Taking care of your wife, you go to work, you have to take care of that. What do you do to make it easier on yourself? I don't know what you mean. Well, you have a hobby, you watch TV, go to the pub, what? I dance. Well, I take dancing lessons. How does your wife feel about that? Could we talk about the shooting and how I feel about that? We're getting there. So how does your wife feel about you taking dancing lessons? I don't talk about it. Why, do you think she'd be jealous? Why would she be jealous? You're doing something without her. I don't talk about it because she doesn't remember. I tell her something and a minute later she asks me the same question again. I get tired of repeating myself. So I don't talk about anything unless it's like 
Are you hungry? Are you cold? Can I tie your shoes like that? Half the time, she doesn't remember who I am, so why would I want to tell her about the dancing? I understand. It, it sounds like you might feel some uh, resentment there, w which would be natural. I feel like she's dead, and you're telling me that's natural? Yeah, it is. Maybe we should switch chairs. <laughs> okay. You want to talk about the shooting? Please. Sitting out there a long time. Yeah. I was just trying to get up the courage. To come and talk to you. I uh I spoke to your sergeant and she gave me the official version of what happened. Yeah, she told me. I'm sorry. That's what happened, right? Yeah, that's what happened. And I just wanted to let you know, I, uh Hope you're gonna be okay. Let me know if I can do anything. At all. I don't think there's anything you can do. Okay. Good night. Visit davinciesinquest.tv.